seeking and justice for all. My name is Heidi Berg, and I'm a speech-language pathologist. I am joined by other speech paths from the district. They are Kayla Rausch, Kelsey Martin, Melanie Rood, Norbert Lacey, Dixie Teeter, and Eileen Raymer. <laughs> you may know roughly what we do, and here's a summary. We see students from age 3 to 21 with communication issues like speech sound errors, stuttering, and language needs. We live in an area with high need. Our clients come from every background and every level of an advantage and disadvantage. You may be familiar with the plight of the SLP. In the past years, um, Margaret and Melanie and I had 130 or 140 kids, and right now, we are fully staffed according to what we're currently given. And um, when we had over 100 kids and almost 150 kids, we spent days sometimes going between seven buildings in one day to keep everything all together. So fully staffed is what we are right now, and our caseloads still range from 60 to 90, and according to Kansas guidelines, average is 45 to 50, and that depends on the severity of student needs, and our students are just as severe, if not more severe, than any other place in the state. Coming from the severe shortage of speech paths, we are now offering um, Chevrolet service in place of the not Cadillac service, and um, with high caseloads, even the Chevrolet service model is difficult to implement, especially at the Early Childhood Center, where nearly all, 80 to 90 percent of those kids present with a communication disorder or delay. We have received an offer of five overloads, and you'll see that on your agenda, and this is for five of us taking extra work during the extended absence of one of our colleagues. And with our caseloads, we wanted to present just a little bit more detail about the offer. Five of us receive the off overload, and two do not. With the other two colleagues were already full. One of them had 90, and one had a very full service schedule with lots of needy kids. Being unable to add any additional students, they are seen as ineligible for the five overloads, and we respectfully disagree with that rationale. We hope that with some revisions to our schedules, we can alleviate the squeeze that we are showing. In addition, we hope that you'll invite Dr. Johnson and Mr. Hogan to look again to find two additional overloads to offer our colleagues who are already carrying much more than a full load. In addition, we hope that you will support any future move that will ensure the hiring of sufficient number of speech paths so that these situations can be addressed before they become issues. Thank you. Stand behind the podium. <laughs> oh, no, 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 they got diplomas or something. Uh, I just, I know I've called most of the board members here and tried to talk with you, so this is just a recap of the issue that I'm here because I'm here to, I'm going to, I'll just read what I wrote. I'm here to encourage you to vote to keep artificial turf on the field at Memorial Stadium. I was a member of the board that decided to remove the sod and replace it with artificial turf many years ago. At that time, the high school shared the stadium with the community college, and both schools enjoyed successful football programs that played extended seasons due to playoff bursts in their respective leagues. 
This plus the addition of soccer programs whose participation numbers surpassed those of the football program and marching band practices and competitions and outdoor PE classes, uh, the costs associated with the maintenance of the field were what moved us as a board in the direction of artificial turf. And I understand the emotion associated with this decision. I would like to point out that at the time we made this decision, I, for one, viewed it as a permanent solution. Some of the reasons I feel you should view it the same way are as follows. A significant amount of money has been spent on facilities around the field to make the stadium an aesthetically and functionally attractive venue for events both for the community and for the district. The track, um, there was a time when the high school couldn't use that track because it was short a lane. So when Bill Weatherly was the AD, uh, Pepsi money I think paid for that, but a, a significant amount of money was spent on the track so that it could, could host sanctioned events. Certainly the concession stand, those of us, it goes back to the days when our children were in band and we sold concessions underneath the grandstands. If you had any memory of that, you would understand how significant the concession stand was. The restrooms, the visitors, bleachers, the press box, all of those are um, additions that have been made to that stadium and I suggest to you that is a beautiful facility. The school district has an excellent record of maintaining facilities. I submit that that could be a beautiful facility for many, many, many years to come. I know the cost is always a factor in any decision you make as a board member and I'm, I'm not privy to the discussion that you had. I, I didn't have an opportunity to watch it on uh, the BBS. I know cost could be held to a minimum uh, by choosing a mid-level turf, no emblems or inline identifications associated with the school, just soccer and football yard map markers and boundaries. Uh, the current field, I believe, is 12 years old. Uh, I'm thinking the warranty was 8 or 10 years. I, I don't remember. But I'd like you to bear in mind that for as probably at least eight of those years, the college and the high school still played on that field. And I know that um, the drop test began to fail on the West End because everything comes in and off that West End, the band, the PE programs. So I, I, I would submit to you, this is my best guess, I don't think it's a lie, but I think that uh, I would think at the current utilization, and I'm, I'm not sure what that is, but I know you don't have the, the size of athletes on that field that you used to have, but I would think that at the current utilization you could realistically expect whatever field you choose, whatever turf you choose, you could, you could expect that field to surpass its warranty period with no significant safety problems because I do know the college and the high school played on that field for a period of time after the West End. I think the southwest corner began to show some failure issues. The other thing I'd like to point out in closing is this is a capital outlay project and as such I feel that it's no different from for instance the carpet in this building here. It is something that just has to be maintained. It will be an issue for a future board, but I appreciate your time. I would encourage you to vote in support of that. I know that there was a proposition put before you about moving that back to sod. I will use a very poor analogy here and say this building that we are in today used to be a warehouse, a, gro a, a wholesale grocery facility, and as such it had a concrete floor. I don't think anybody in here would suggest that we go back, tear the carpet out, and make it a concrete floor again. It's an improvement that you've made, it, it benefits the district, it benefits the community, so I think you're in the unfortunate position probably of just being that transition board. There will come a time when I really believe it, it's just a matter of replacement, which I think it really is right now. So, thank you for your time.
for letting us speak with you this evening. A few years ago when I was uh, one of the administrators at the high school, I worked with National Honor Society. We need to come up with something that was really low cost that would be a great community service project. And at that time, I worked with Jesse Bernal Sr. and then with Maria Murison and we collected pop tabs. That was a big deal with the high school National Honor Society. In fact, in the um, in the break room over here, it still shows that can that says to support National Honor Society. They have not been doing that for a few years, but that's something that when I shifted over to being the librarian, we continued, but went through the libraries. Well, now I'm back in the regular classroom, and I'm getting great cooperation from several of the schools um, within our district, Alta Brown, Abe Hubert, uh, Buffalo Jones, Edith Sharman, Florence Wilson, Gertrude Walker, Jenny Barker has not contributed yet, but they are planning to. Uh, Jenny Wilson, Bernadine Sitz, Rogers at Charles Stones, I'm at Bernadine Sitz, and he said I forgot my tabs, uh, but they are contributing to the ESC. We also have a gentleman from Tyson who contributes. Hard Rock Lanes has contributed in years past. Garden Bowl said they would be interested. And then the Garden City River Riders have also said they would cooperate. The other place that helps us tremendously is Teachers Credit Union. They have been a drop-off point for us. And this represents right here 168 and a half pounds of pop tabs. Roger and I volunteer. We do not accept any money for it. We do this on a weekend or during our time off. But we take these to the Ronald McDonald House in Wichita, Kansas. Um, the one by Via Christi, St. Francis, they then turn these in and this helps to provide funds to pay their electric bills. Uh, last year alone they had over $10,000 that they raised from the Wichita area primarily. We took around probably this twice, yes, about, um, 300 pounds. about 300 pounds last year. We were hoping we could beat the record. The comment made to us was, I can't believe Little Garden City, Kansas could do this. So we would like to have you know this is what we are doing as a district. Um, we hope that this can continue because it is a great thing to do. If any of you are interested, um, we have great support from our local Ronald McDonald's franchisees. Um, they have provided several little collection boxes for us, or the larger boxes, but it is a no cost to anybody here in the district, good community service program, and we just wanted to let you know that we appreciate the help that the schools have been providing to us. Well, thank you for all that you do. Thank you very much. Um, Dr. Carlin, I know we're at recognizing 
decided to we award an excellent and well in wellness award every month um, for people for staff members that basically um, model healthy living um, in the school and outside the school in the classroom and we're awarding three people tonight the first one is our December nominee is um, Nikki Allen I'm just going to read what her nom nominee no, nominator um, said about Nikki Nikki is a prime example of wellness for our schools. She not only chairs several activities she participates in as well. She arranges for us to drink ample daily um, water by having a machine in her room, um, coordinates an after-school running club with staff and students, coordinates numerous 5K runs throughout the year and participates in them, even while pregnant. And I just want to say, she's already running. She had a baby four weeks ago. Four weeks ago. Yeah, four weeks ago. yeah and she's already running. And she motivated me to get out the door again. Um, coordinates the biggest loser contest for staff, encourages staff and students to do exercise brain breaks every Tuesdays and Thursdays, coordinates walking to school on Fridays with staff and students, smiles. Um, every time you see her, she has that wonderful smile. She just is always smiling. And the one thing, um, the walking school bus, you do that on Fridays when the weather's nice. Yep. And that she had arranged for the college pet band to come to Victor and Alice and play as the kids walk to school and that was that was a really cool event and and she just had a 5k on saturday and we have one more coming up on april 30th april 30th so if you haven't done one of nikki's 5ks one of the vo 5ks you really need to do it because it's an awesome event they, i mean people of all ages kids are running and we had there were some kiddos that did really well there was college athletes and soccer players came and ran this this time so it's a really neat event so thank you nikki for everything that you do She's unable to be here. She's spending some time with her mom, Ulysses. But I'll just write what her nominee, um, nominator wrote about her. <clears throat> she is part of the wellness team for Gertrude Walker. Mary is first to sign up for any of the wellness challenges. She has been very supportive, encouraged staff, students, and parents' wellness. She is in charge of our staff Get Fit Tuesday and presents many ways to encourage staff to be healthy. She is very good about keeping her students in her class active with Go Needle, Me, Jam a Minute, Classroom Walks, and more. She offers um, to present a healthy category like Go Noodle and participates with them as they visit and do other health activities. She encourages them to do at home. She also rides her bike to school when weather permits. And so we also have an award for um, Mary. Our, um, our next one is our February winner, and it is um, Matthew Horney, and he is here tonight. Uh, Matthew Horney is a third grade teacher at Jenny Barker School um, and he is a very strong supporter at Jenny Barker and outside of the school in his um, dedication to health. At Jenny Barker, um, he elects himself to do extracurricular teaching in the form of lung and dissection and teaching students and adults about lungs and um, sharing. Why is it important to take care of your lungs? He'll be doing a lung um, You do, um, are you going to do lung? Yeah, for health night we dissect it. Just, okay, that's yeah. what I thought that said. And <laughs> so they're going to dissect lungs and hearts at health night um, again this year. He's a strong leader in the technical support, encouragement of Go Noodle and Jam a Minute, setting up with all of his teachers so they can utilize these activities in the classroom. Um, he will be presenting to the Board of Education this month, representing health at Jenny Barker Schools. And did you already do that? Thank you, Matt. Without these leaders, and if you guys want to go ahead. Without these leaders in our schools, wellness, our wellness program would not be as near as strong as it is. So um, I really appreciate the um, extra mile that they go through.
also, um, we have Jennifer Church from the American Heart Association. And she's on her way via which, well, she had meetings in Wichita, meetings all day. She's making a stop in Garden City, and she lives in Colby, so she's kind of had a long day. <laughs> so I'm welcome to have her. Oh, thank you. Um, it's an honor to be here again. Last year I had the opportunity and the privilege to stand before you um, to recognize the uh, school district for achieving the gold level of Fit Friendly. Um, and I'm honored to say again that the district has once again um, achieved that level and have renewed their membership as a Fit Friendly Gold member um, for 2015. And so um, we just have the uh, year to add to the plaque that I gave to Tracy last year. So um, I just want to take a minute to thank the board, um, the wellness committee, all of the wellness champions within their schools for making health and wellness a priority, not only with your students, but with your staff as well. We know that when employees are healthy um, and active, that they're happy at work. Uh, absenteeism goes down and just overall performance goes up. And so making that a priority um, really shows the um, importance that the district puts on their staff and their health and wellness. Um, feel kind of ironic following uh, the, the pop tab because um, <laughs> uh, we don't really promote drinking pop. But, but if anything positive is going to come out of um, out of pop, then I think that's great. So, um, and I know there are other ways to get those pop tab those tabs other than just pops. But um, <laughs> we won't discuss those. But, <laughs> um, but I just want to thank you um, for making uh, for taking the health and wellness of your employees um, and making that a priority so that they can uh, model those behaviors for their students and we can have a healthier generation to come. My name, I'm Riley Ortiz, I'm Hannah Robles, I'm Jose Hernandez, I'm Toby Aiken, I'm Sufferin Hernandez, I'm Kevin Knight, I'm Edmund Carter. We are a group of students from Kenda Henderson Middle School and we want to share with you some exciting things that have been going on at KH. <clears throat> the core leadership team, formerly known as Student Council and SAF, hosted a Veterans Day breakfast for local veterans. Ten members of the community, of the community enjoyed a breakfast prepared by the class Foods class, and then we're present for the presentation of a flag that flew over Camp RB in Afghanistan. That was donated by a former KH student who served in the Marines. It is now on display at our school. Finish for Patience is a fundraiser that, that we do every year for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. The fundraiser is a competition between all social studies classes. This year we raised $1,064.
GFC, we help out our school and community. We do many community service events as leadership classes to help us become better students and role model leaders. Color Guard is a JLC program where we where we perform with flags at all home sporting events and also other special events like parades or when we went to the senior center for Veterans Day. The Red Stocking Breakfast was at Big Perry on Inn. The breakfast was for the Children's Service League. They were raising money for the Head Start program. Some things we did were help serve food and drinks and bus tables. JLC volunteered at the Groundhog Supper at the United Methodist Church to help prepare the food and also serve it. The Groundhog Supper helped provide scholarships through the church. Spaghetti dinner was, uh, was an event we volunteered at. It was helped and set up by St. Dominic's. They had spaghetti and dinner, and JLC helped out in the gamble. Our profit went to the church school. We had some athletic success this year, including our 8th grade girls cross country team and our 8th grade volleyball team who are MS WAC champions. This year, PA started the student section. Our student section started out small but grew bigger. We did game themes such as Neon Night, Superhero Night, and even Nerd Night to make an energetic atmosphere for the players and students. Coaches and players appreciated the support from the students and the students had fun doing it. Last Wednesday, our Cage Music Program <coughs> participated at the Western Kansas Music Festival. Our Cage Singers, 8th grade choir, band, and orchestra all received a superior rating. Our 7th grade choir received an excellent rating. This year during our first period, we had enrichment, interventions, and kids club. The enrichment classes are served as a reward for students who are passing all of their classes. These students are given the opportunity to choose an enrichment class that interests them for a semester. Some enrichment classes that have been offered are yearbook, the Lion King play, foods, guitar, line dancing, board games, careers, logic puzzles, silent reading, traveling the world, walking club, and jazz band. If the student qualifies and needs interventions, they get their intervention time during this period. If a student is failing a class, they are moved out of their enrichment into kids club where they have an opportunity to get work done and fix their grade. They will remain in kids club until they are passing again and then they are allowed to go back to the enrichment classes. Last semester, the CAGE students participated in the Lion King Junior Play. About 50 of our students were in the play either backstage, helped with props, or were at. Pride Sides Reward Program for students who maintain good academics and behavior. You get rewarded the card that gets you to the front of the lunch line, also a party for each quarter you make it, and a t shirt. Thank you for letting us share with you some exciting things that have been going on at Katie. just add that we turned this over to the students, um, specifically the JLC, um, the Stuco, and the SAD groups, along with their sponsors, Mr. Perez, Mr. Byer, and Mr. Dinkle, and said, tell the board what you want them to know about KH. 
this is entirely student produced through the, the media classes and, and those classes with the teachers just kind of helping them practice and, and, and do that type of thing. So um, I thought it was really neat that they found that you don't just educate math and reading, you educate the whole person and you look at what we do as a community. I thought that was really nice that they looked at that. So any questions for us? We had to usher them out rather quickly because there's a concert that starts now. So a <laughs> choir concert. So some of them are, are doing dual duty tonight. So. Okay. Excellent job. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just thank our parents that are here? That, oh, please. I, parents, will you stand up, please? We have several parents in the audience. Some of them may have, have <laughs> chauffeured up to the high of the school already, but. I just want to thank them for allowing their students to, to be a part of this. Thank you. observations of classroom management with teachers, so those teachers that want help or need a little extra help, I go in and kind of coach 
them through their classroom management. Um, I've also begun teaching workshops through Newman University as continuing education for teachers that need to renew. And there's just a growing interest in CHAMPS. They want to learn more about it and how to implement it. Currently, it's based on building need. It's not required that schools do a CHAMPS training. Um, one thing that we are noticing is it's kind of become almost like a buzzword. I'm sure you guys have heard a lot about it in a lot of the presentations that you get. Uh, and they're seeing the value in teaching that, that expected behavior. That's why it's kind of spreading like wildfire. So this is what we see. This is what we used to, I guess this is what we used to know. Academics and behavior were thought of as separate values. But what we're finding is that you can't have academics without the behavior support. So you're looking at a focus on prevention and having a behavioral framework in place to support behavior at all the tiers. You're also uh, teaching those pro-social behaviors. What does it take for them to be successful in the classroom? And when we look at our goal with CHAMPS, it's no student falls through the cracks. We have those universal supports in place, along with um, not only school-wide, but classroom-wide, and then looking at, okay, how can we further help those students that aren't getting the support that they need? 